Hi everybody. If you haven't watched the Nightmare Expo video on Stephanie Lawson Stevens, I highly recommend it. This video is going to serve as a follow-up to that, to the events that were covered in the Nightmare Expo video. So, a couple of months ago I came across the Nightmare Expo video of Stephanie Lawson Stevens, or as I'll sometimes refer to her as SLS. I found the video and the topic to be incredibly interesting. In the video, the narrator referenced his Discord chat server, and uh, after watching the video I decided to hop into the server to see what further developments had been made regarding SLS. It turns out that I had gone to the right place. The Nightmare Expo Discord server had sort of turned into the official SLS investigation home base. It was far more active than any subreddit or other group. People were working day and night to decipher codes found in images and posts from SLS. At this point, the main source of official SLS content was coming from the Stephanie Lawson Stevens Facebook page. Uh, and upon my arrival, it had just recently also been confirmed that there was an Instagram associated with this person as well. Now, I won't be going into all of the details of the puzzles, the clues, the ciphers, all of that sort of thing, and I'll also be skipping some of the side pages, such as the church Facebook page and the church website. If you'd like to explore all of that, I suggest that you swing by the Stephanie Lawson Stevens channel in the Nightmare Expo Discord server and check out the pinned posts. This will uh, be more of a general timeline of important events here. So moving forward, at this point we now have a Stephanie Facebook profile a Stephanie Instagram and a Stephanie website. At some point it was also confirmed that there was a Stephanie Discord handle. And additionally there was an itch site that had two games on it. Early on we were not sure what this whole thing was. It felt kind of like an ARG or maybe an online story similar to The Sun Vanished or Dear David. Uh, however, some people speculated that it could be an AI, uh, a bot, or even something more sinister such as a malicious group or individual attempting to spread malware. Because of this confusion, the users in the Discord chat were unsure how to proceed. Was this a a game that should be played and enjoyed? Was it a story? Uh, if it was somebody with malicious intent, should we be trying to figure out who they are? So on. On July 13th, Stephanie posted on Facebook that she would be taking a break, and that good things come in threes. This seemed to be the point where things began to really pick up. During this three-day break, Stephanie became active on Discord and began to interact with users who had sent her messages. People were sharing screenshots of their conversations with her and really getting into it. The common theme with these messages appeared to be that Stephanie wanted everybody to become Stephanie. It didn't make much sense at the time, but it would become a bit more clear later. Three days after Stephanie posted on Facebook about her break, she began posting again. Users quickly noticed that a third game had popped up on her Itch account. This game was the most strange of the three, but in retrospect it provided quite a bit of clarity. In a nutshell, we began to realize that this was, indeed, an interactive online story, or ARG. The main character was a person suffering from dissociative identity disorder, sometimes called multiple personality disorder. At that time, it appeared as though Stephanie was the personality in control. 
Roughly around this point, clues led us to a Tumblr blog and a Twitter account. It turned out that the Twitter account was the medium for another personality to speak, that personality being Alice. The Tumblr blog was the medium for Anne, yet another personality. On top of all of that, the SLS Facebook page changed its name to Jennifer Mount Zorus, which was now the fourth personality. Jennifer had taken control from Stephanie and was now the most prominent personality. However, when she went to bed at night, Anne and Alice would take turns speaking, and Stephanie was temporarily out of the picture. So I know that that was a lot to recap. At this point, now we have Anne via Tumblr, Alice via Twitter, Jennifer via Facebook, and Stephanie's Instagram was still there, but mostly inactive at the time. During this time frame, in the early evening, users could message Jennifer via her Facebook page. They could ask questions and just kind of chat in general. After around 10 or 11 p.m., Jennifer would go to bed, and users would watch to see who would become active first after that. Sometimes it was Anne, and sometimes it was Alice. Whoever became active would begin responding to messages and making posts on their platform. It was like this for multiple days. Users would talk to Jennifer, and then Anne and Alice. During this time, there weren't many codes or puzzles or really anything to be figured out. It was mostly just chatting. It was sort of a getting-to-know-you sort of thing. We were spending time getting to know the newly introduced personalities and sort of filling in the gaps in the storyline, uh, which helped to make the third itch game uh, make more sense. Each personality was very different and unique, and it was a lot of fun getting to know them. After a few days of this, a new post arrived on Stephanie's Instagram. Stephanie was letting us know that she was trying to retake control and come back to us. However, since the name on the main profile on Facebook had recently been changed, it couldn't be changed again. So Stephanie made a new Facebook page. At this point, the Jennifer Facebook went silent. On July 21st, Stephanie made a post on Facebook and Instagram stating that it was time to vote for Homecoming Queen. The votes would be in the form of different emojis for each of the four personalities. Stephanie stated that the votes would be counted at midnight. However, she made a surprise post at 11 p.m. stating that the tally would happen early. The majority of the homecoming votes were for Stephanie. Since she had won, she posted that she was going to reintegrate all of the personalities and take complete control. This made a lot of people angry, as it began to appear more and more like Stephanie was the villain of this story. People began to post that Stephanie had cheated by counting the votes early, and that since she had cheated, everyone should change their vote before midnight, which was the original tally time. That worked. It was a success. People began changing their votes, and by midnight, Alice had secured the majority of the votes. Right at midnight, Stephanie posted that she hadn't expected that to happen, and shortly thereafter changed the name of her profile to Setsuki Stevens. So we were now presented with a fifth personality. This new personality was now in control and wrote a post assuring that all of the personalities were present and safe. Each of the other accounts made one final post, including the Jennifer page, the Ann Tumblr, and the Alice Twitter. This story was unique in the way that it brought so many people together. 
Strangers from across the world gathered in a Discord server to work together to figure out clues, solve mysteries, kind of like a virtual collective Scooby-Doo gang. Uh, good times were had, friends were made. Unfortunately, this is where the story ends. Since the early hours of July 22nd, the accounts have gone silent, and the game seems to have come to a close.